Like I said, it wasn't me. So none of this was me. So it's like cellulitis, broken bones, screws. It, it wasn't me. So someone here in the valley racked up hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of medical care using a stolen identity. Yeah, as on your site, Susan Campbell found out medical identity theft can happen to anyone. Really uh, an incredible story here of this woman who is being charged for all these procedures that she didn't undergo. Yeah, and some of these bills date back a couple years, so it is taking a long time to unravel this mess. There are hospital visits even a surgery, and the person whose identity was stolen is still struggling to prove she shouldn't be on the hook for any of it. This is the real Jennifer O'Connor. There's a fake Jennifer out there too, and she's using the real Jennifer's identity to get medical care. The bills are outrageous. I, I, I get a new bill every day and I just wanna cry. What's the total of these bills? For just the surgery was $217,000. Another 32,000 here, 9,300 there. I'm getting bills from CT scans, um, bills from anesthesiologists, different doctors that she saw at the hospital. It, it's just overwhelming. Jennifer says she's aware of two ambulance rides and four hospital visits at Banner and Honor Health facilities. The first sign of a problem was a bill from an anesthesiologist. $2,400 for anesthesia, and I'm like, Anesthesia? When did I go under anesthesia? <laughs> and so I looked more into it and all I had to do to get into it was put in my date of birth and bam, there's the bill. The real Jennifer is a respiratory therapist at a Banner facility. Her supervisor submitted this letter to their own employer to prove the real Jennifer was on the clock when the fake Jennifer was getting medical care. I just know that I was working my butt off and <laughs> I wasn't getting screws in my legs and on fentanyl, that's for sure. Still the paper trail and the police reports Jennifer filed weren't enough to unravel the mess. I get two emails from Banner saying they're gonna garnish my wages for the visit at Banner uh, Boswell ER for 150 and a $36 bill from Banner Desert. She says bills from Honor Health are still coming too. They just sent it to collections. If it sounds like a nightmare, it is. But Jennifer's not alone. It is getting easier and easier to obtain the data of a legitimate person and then create the, the fake identity. Eva Velasquez is the president and CEO of the Identity Theft Resource Center. When it comes to medical identity theft, it does get really tricky because we don't have a central repository for all of our medical records. So I encourage people to focus their energy on just protecting their identity on the whole. And that means make sure you have unique passwords across all of your accounts. Enable multi-factor authentication to protect accounts from breaches and protect physical documents that have personal information on them. That includes securing your mailbox. And if you are a victim of medical identity theft, keep meticulous records. The unfortunate reality is that you must resolve this directly with the entity where the fraud occurred. We know medical identity theft can be costly, but it also comes with serious health concerns. You potentially now have mixed medical records with the thief and you could get improper care, improper diagnosis. You could also uh, not have the ability to get necessary prescriptions filled or to get access to necessary medical equipment because the thief has already gotten those things in your name. That's what Jennifer fears the most. All her medical stuff is on file, not mine. If I was in a car accident on the way home, God forbid, and I was out of it and needed blood products, I could die because she probably doesn't have the same blood type as me. And that so we first reached out to Honor Health and Banner more than a month ago. So far, they have not answered any of our questions about Jennifer's case or our questions about their policies regarding medical identity theft. We want to know what they do when things like this are reported. Now, we also did check in with law enforcement. Mesa police tell us this case is inactive. 
Uh, Phoenix police tell us they are still investigating, still collecting evidence. Mm. Maricopa County Sheriff's Office says they have not identified any suspects or made any arrests, wow. but their investigation is ongoing too. So that just kind of shows you the spider web yeah. of what can happen when you have to go to all these different entities. She's talking to multiple multiple providers, more than a dozen she's trying to unravel oh my this. Gosh. So we are going to continue to try to work with her, try to find a resolution. Right. Uh, but we know if it's happening to her, there's a good chance it's happening to someone else too. 100%. Oh, this whole thing is just a jaw dropper. Like I, every, every, every second, new piece like, of information, whoa. you're just like, how is that happening? Yeah. So yeah. imagine staring Oof. at a $217,000 bill. No, no, it happens in a movie, but it's happening in real life. Thank you, Susan, incredible uh, work there.